This is the first ability and the boss will always start with this. Here you need to use the dungeon ability Temporal Shift to swap between errors and avoid it. This ability is lethal and will one-shot you. You have 4 to 5 seconds to use this ability and you can use this as a DPS phase. The boss will always follow you when you are swapping errors and when she does this she will always apply a debuff to you that will make you leave a void puddle when it expires. You should try to walk towards the edge of the arena when swapping error, so you can drop the puddle somewhere where it doesn't deny a lot of space. You should never drop this close to the center of the room because of some of the following other abilities that you need to deal with. The boss will frequently summon three of these pillars that don't do anything in the divine error and are easily killable. They do however will cast void telegraphs at you when you are in the ruined error and are indestructible in the ruined error. Do not panic if you can't kill all three of them. The attacks in the ruined error are not super deadly but can overlap. Having all three of them can be dangerous, but if you can't kill all three it's not a big deal. The boss also summons this healing well which sometimes overlap with the pillar spawns. This is also indestructible in the ruined error. This water cone telegraph is highly lethal and needs to be avoided by most builds. If you have movement skills you should try and spare them for this ability, especially early on when you are learning the fight. You should always move diagonally left or right towards the boss for the shortest path out of this telegraph. This ability is often used by the boss when she follows you to another error and can overlap with the void puddle debuff that you want to drop at the edge of the arena. This void line attack is only used by the boss if you are in close proximity. It can be lethal to some builds but if you can survive it you can also ignore it. The telegraph of this sometimes is really hard to see and makes this one of the most insidious abilities. Now we come to the most oppressing and lethal ability in the entire boss fight. This void laser does damage after a short delay and starts spinning. It always has the same shape and thus the safe zone also is always in the same spot. This is arguably the most important mechanic of the boss fight and also the reason why proper void puddle placement is very important. These circle lightning telegraphs are often cast in succession by the boss and become bigger each time, up to 3 times maximum. This water seeking projectile can be outrun, but also is not necessarily lethal. If your build can face tank it, you can generally ignore it. If you need to outrun this ability with your build, this is another reason why proper void puddle placement is very important, so you have enough space to do that. When the boss is out of reach from the safe zone of the void laser, don't be greedy and just play all the mechanics properly. The void laser will always disappear after a short time. Now some quick summary of some of the most important things to keep in mind. The debuff with the void puddle always comes when swapping errors. Do not try to swap errors early if not really necessary. If you feel like you made a huge mistake and are about to die, you can always change errors as an emergency. Place the void puddles at the edge of the arena. Keep in mind where your void puddles are in both eras, so you don't accidentally swap into one. The void puddles do not last indefinitely, but they last for a couple of minutes, so even with very low DPS, if you play the mechanics properly, there is no hard enrage on this boss. Spare your movement skill for the big water cone if necessary. Kill the healing well. Play mechanics, don't be greedy. This boss only has mechanical or telegraph damage that is avoidable. Cannot see the light. 